Hi everybody, it's Webby, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the brand new Ford Mustang Mach-E Premium. The Mustang Mach-E isn't a new car per se, but here in Australia it's only just arrived, so this video is for Australian specification cars. But if you're viewing elsewhere in the world, welcome to the video. I uh, hope you learn a little bit about the Mustang Mach-E today. Now for full disclosure before we get started in the video, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you may know I actually work at a Ford dealership. I sell new cars for a living. Um, so this car that I'm showing you today is a car that's been lent to my dealership from Ford Australia for a few days uh, so we can show customers um, and prospective customers can come and see and drive the car. So it's actually going to another dealership tomorrow so I've got today to film this video to show you a little bit about this car. Um, so we're going to have a look at some of the features, explain some of the technology, uh, a bit about obviously the electric side of things about charging and so forth and then take the car for a drive to see what it's like out on the open road. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. There's no biased opinions. Yes, I sell these for a living, um, but I will be giving you my honest opinion on what I think about this car, including the name. So let's get started looking at the Mustang Mach-E Premium uh, here in Australia. And before we get started looking around the car, if it gets a little bit windy, I do apologize. It's quite a windy day here in Melbourne today. Um, but like I said, unfortunately, today's the only day I've got the opportunity to actually film with this car. So beggars can't be choosers unfortunately. So this is the premium model. It's the middle model in the range, below it is the Select and above it is the GT. This is the model to have if you're worried about anxiety in terms of the range of how far you can drive because on the WLTP figures this is allegedly able to do up to 600 kilometers per charge. Now when I left work last night it was 100% charge, it had 530 kilometers of range so a little bit less than what it said uh, on the official figures but then I've never driven any petrol or diesel car that matches the official figures either. So that's not a big surprise. In terms of pricing for Mackey here in Australia, I started just under $80,000 plus on road costs for the select entry level model. This premium is just over 90,000. And the GT, which is the four wheel drive super fast model, uh, is just over $107,000. All of those are plus on road costs. As I said, we're looking at the premium model here today. Over and above the standard model, this has got a slightly bigger battery. So the battery is 91 kilowatt hours in this mid-range premium model. There's one motor, which is on the rear axle. That develops 216 kilowatts and 430 newton meters of torque. So plenty of power for day-to-day -day driving. And in terms of charging, as I said, it's a 91 kilowatt battery. You're able to receive 10.5 kilowatts of AC power, um, so that's phase two. If you manage to find a phase three super fast charger, it can actually take up to 150 kilowatts um, charging speed. So yeah, it's not gonna take probably 40, 45 minutes or something like that to charge uh, from zero to 100% on one of those super fast chargers. If you're gonna charge it just from a 2.4 amp plug in your garage, watch out, that will take a very, very long time. So get yourself a fast charger at home and use the cable that comes with the car uh, and that should take roughly around eight to nine hours, depending on how much charge you've already got in the car at a time. But from dead flat, yeah, just under nine hours. So nine hours isn't actually too bad. So you can plug the car in before you go to bed, uh, get up in the morning to go to work, it's fully charged. And then like I say, you've got probably over somewhere between five and 600 kilometers of range. So for most people that would actually be plenty throughout the year, it equates to something like 25,000 kilometers a year. A lot of people don't even do that. Um, so. There goes the problems of range anxiety. As long as you charge it up at home on your fast charger, and we do your 500 odd, odd Ks per week, um, you might only need to charge up once a week, so that's pretty good in my, uh, my eyes. There, let's have a look around the car then. A couple of things worth noting on the outside. Um, with this premium model, we get the upgraded uh, Matrix LED headlights. Uh, at the front of the car, you've got front parking sensors. You've also got the side sensors there for the active park assist. Under the bonnet, because you haven't got an engine, you've obviously got a bit of storage, which you can actually open from the key on the key fob. You double press the button, that will open what they call the frunk. And in here, we've got 134 litres of carrying capacity. There's a couple of drainage holes in the bottom. So if you're the sort of person that likes to go out um, sort of surfing, you can put your wetsuit in there at the end of the day. Any water will just go out of the drain holes. Or if you're feeling a little bit sort of thirsty, Fill the thing up with ice, 
put a load of beers in so you and your mate can have a few beers. Uh, obviously alcohol free for the driver. Um, but yeah, 134 litres of carrying capacity, uh, which is plenty, because you've got over 400 litres in the boot, so there's actually plenty of carrying capacity in this car. Coming around to the side of the car, the wheel arches and all the trims are going on the bottoms of the door and then go around to the back. On the base model, this is just sort of black plastic, but on this premium model, they're painted gloss black. So they do look a bit nicer as well. Uh, it lives a little bit more upmarket. 19 inch alloy wheels, which again are a different design uh, to the base model. They've got just sort of standard looking wheels with these sort of aero wheel covers for better efficiency. Um, we've also got red brake calip as well. That's another way you can spot that this is a premium model uh, and not the entry level select. I think the styling for the Mackie is really, really good as well. It's got a very sort of athletic look about it. This isn't coming out of Ford, by the way. I just think it looks a really nice looking car, particularly from this sort of three quarter angle. Um, I love how there's sort of no door handles. You literally just got a push button here uh, and also one on the front door. Uh, I'll talk a bit about the locking system and bits and pieces like that in a minute. Um, I love how the roof is all black as well and you've got this extended spoiler which comes out the back of the car. They've actually got the same tri bar LED lights that you get on a normal Mustang as in the sports car. Um, so that's where they're trying to sort of bring the Mustang name into this Mackie. Uh, by copying some of the styling designs from obviously the coupe. Um, as I said, you decide when you think this should be called a Mustang. I know there's a lot of discussion about that out there on the internet. Um, personally speaking, I think they should have just called it Mackey and then even used the Mustang name. Um, but that's just my personal opinion. I have driven all three models when I went to some Ford training recently. Um, the GT is the only one you can say, yeah, that's a Mustang. Uh, that is seriously fast. Yeah. I'm going to be bringing a review of that to the channel when I can get my hands on one. Um, that is stupidly fast. Um, that's the only one I think I've had a problem with Mustang. Um, the others, just call it a Mach-E. Why do you need to call it a Mustang? Um, yes, I know there's the whole Ford Mustang, etc., etc. But this is a four-door uh, This is a four door SUV. It's not a two-door sports coupe. Hey? Um, that's, like I say, that's just my opinion. Um, so anyway, let's have a look inside the boot and see how much storage space they've got. Uh, it's obviously an electric, as you'd expect. Uh, and we can use the key as well to uh, open the side gate. So I do apologize if it's sounding a bit windy. I'm trying to keep the microphone out of the wind. It opens up at over 400 litres of capacity. Uh, the boot floor has got two heights. You can obviously adjust that depending on what you want to put in the boot. The, fold, the rear seats obviously fold down, you've got a 60 40 split. Uh, under the boot, you've actually got the cable that comes with the car. Uh, that's the one to go into a fast charger. Uh, so Ford actually very kindly supply that for you. And because they're pretty expensive. Because um, I know some manufacturers just live, give you cable to charge your car from your plug inside your garage, which is bloody pointless really, because it takes forever and a day to charge your car. I mentioned a moment ago, I was going to show you a little bit about how you can get in and out of this car. Um, you've got a standard key, pretty much like any other Ford that you can buy these days. Well, that door handles, you've just got these little sort of push buttons that you push and it will open the door for you. Same okay. for the front door, but there's also a handy little trick. If you're the sort of person who likes to go to the beach, go for a swim, and you're worried about what you're going to do with all your personal belongings, the Mustang Mach-E has actually got a solution for that. So what you can actually do, there's like a car, there's a digital keypad on the driver's door to get in and out of the car once you've actually locked it. So let me give you a quick demo. What I'm actually going to do is, just for security purposes, is open the window so I don't accidentally lock myself out because, well, that'd be a bit of a fail, wouldn't it? So let's do that. I'm just going to leave the key on the top there in front of the uh, driver's display. We'll shut the door. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. So there's five buttons on there. You press the seven, eight, nine, zero together at the same time, and that will lock the car. And you know it's locked because the door mirrors are folded in. So you could put your keys in there, you could put your mobile phone, your wallet, any other personal belongings in the car. They're all safely secured away, so you can go off and do whatever you like, um, go for a swim, jog, whatever you want to do. When you come back to the car, all you've got to do is put in the five digit pin code uh, that you get when you, uh, when you pick up your car. Uh, and that will then allow you to unlock the car and gain access to all your belongings. Mm -hmm. 
that's going in the bloopers video isn't it the wind has actually set because it's so windy today the alarm the wind has actually set the alarm off um so yeah welcome to the bloopers part of the video so now that i actually locked everything in the car so all my personal belongings are in there if you want to get back into the car all you've got to do is put in a five digit code that you actually get when you buy your car and uh, so let me just try that okay so i'll put my five digit code in that unlocks the car which we always done because the wing mirrors have actually folded back out again and uh, we can simply press the button the door opens and we can get access to the car again i think that's a really really cool feature um, it's also on the f-150 as well um so it's obviously a thing that Ford brought over from america uh, but as a general word i think that's actually a pretty cool piece of kit um because yeah a lot of people you know you want to go to the beach you put your stuff in the car because what do you do with your stuff when you go for a swim um it's actually pretty handy for stuff like that um it saves you like yeah losing all your stuff and just leaving it on the beach potentially so i could come on and nick everything and um, so yeah that i think is a really cool feature well, so the next thing we're going to do is actually jump inside and have a look around the car. Uh, I've got my hands here, so I'm trying to cover up the microphone so it's not too windy. Um, if you're enjoying this video, give it a like, share it with your friends, also subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to find out every time a new video comes out. There'll be plenty of stuff coming throughout the rest of the year. There'll be more content with the Mach-E, plus there's also going to be bits and pieces with the new F-150. There's new Mustang coming at the early part of next year as well, so there's plenty of exciting stuff coming. Um, if you're a Ford fan, plus there's some other bits and pieces as well uh, from other manufacturers. So let's get on to the inside of the mach -E and let me show you around uh, some of the features and specifications inside this premium model. Right, so let's get inside this mach -E premium then. And we simply press the button there on the door, pull the latch, and we're in. And the first thing that strikes you when you open the door and get inside this mach -E, is it doesn't really feel like an electric car. It does a little bit, but not completely. It's not like a Tesla where you literally just got one screen and that's it. It does feel sort of fairly normal. I really like this interior here. It's what they call sensor coat, so it's not real leather. Uh, it's got some lovely red stitching around uh, all the different accents on the seats. Uh, the seats are fully electric. Uh, and over here on the door, we've got the buttons uh, for the three memory positions for the driver's seat. The red stitching also carries around here on the driver's door arm. These are the little sort of door release latches there. The speaker system in this car is outstanding. Uh, it's made by b and so it's Bain & Olufsen, uh, and I have to say it's really, really impressive. I do like a good sound system in a car, uh, so I'm very pleased with how the music sounds in this working player. Yeah, I have to help it, sorry, I can show you some of the features in the car. Yeah. You get in this nice blood on the door. Um, I didn't know these are actually made in Mexico, which surprised me. I didn't know they made cars in Mexico, but it turns out they do. Um, so foot on the brake, the power button is just here. So let's bring this into life. We've got the nice little screen there. It shows us we are in a Mustang. So let's just get rid of that. So there you can see on the display there. Uh, so it shows you in the middle is just your, uh, your graphic for your lane keeping aid. Uh, over to the left, so you, as you can see, I've got 428 kilometers worth of range, which is 89% of battery. Uh, it's 24 degrees outside today, uh, so we have got the air conditioning going. Uh, and then just over there, to the right-hand side, you've got your speed. Uh, you've got the little symbol there for your traffic sign recognition. Uh, then on the right-hand side, just tells you what gear you're in. So it's pretty standard stuff, uh, nothing that you wouldn't see on a normal petrol or diesel car. Then we've got this. This is a 15 and a half inch entertainment display, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. Wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. Um, as you can see, we've got the built-in satellite navigation there running at the minute. Uh, obviously does all your phone, your radio. Plus you can access all your settings as well for setting up certain features, uh, bits and pieces on the car. Uh, down at the bottom, this is all our um, air conditioning controls down here as well. There's also a volume button there in the middle, but if you want to adjust the air conditioning, you can simply tap on that, and then the dial becomes your temperature gauge as well, which I think is a handy little feature. Um, and then if you just tap it again, actually, sorry, tap again in the middle, it then goes back to your volume, which is quite cool and uh, quite handy. Um, so yeah, 15 and a half inch screen, very, very easy to, uh, to sort of read as you're driving along the road. Um, unlike that of a Tesla, where you've got the speedo in the top right hand corner, 
we've got the speedo over here so that does make life a little bit easier if we press the middle button here in the top right hand corner of the screen it brings up a couple of controls which are unique to the Mac E so first off we've got the three driving modes here across the middle uh, we're currently in the untamed mode so kind of like a sports mode if you like the active is like an everyday mode so normal if you like and then whisper which is like an economy mode um, so it's pretty similar to what you get in a lot of cars these days um, Ford gives them some interesting names um, but yeah so it's basically eco normal and sport we've also got here the button for one pedal driving so that enables you to literally just use the accelerator to perform accelerating and also braking as well so as soon as you start to lift your foot off the accelerator the car will start to brake uh, and will actually bring you to a complete stop the other button we've got here is for propulsion sound so that will basically play a sound through the speakers inside the car uh, so it gives you a little bit of something going on rather than just being a complete silence uh, the other buttons we've got up here so you've got this graphic of the Mac E you can just see we've got the button there to unlock the front boot and also the rear one um, and also unlock the little charging cable there as well if you've got your car plugged in uh, to the charging cable um, coming down underneath that we've got uh, a wireless charging pad there for your phone uh, plus obviously a bit more storage uh, just up there there's a couple of USBs so we've got the older USB A and then the smaller USB C which is the fast charger a uh, couple of cup holders and then underneath there's actually a bit more storage as well um, which you don't really know and um, kind of is hidden away so it's not a sort of little, sort of secret stash you can put things into uh, then we've got the rotary gear selector here um, same as in say a Ford Escape um, so very uh, sort of normal if you're used to that it's dead easy you just twist the dial to find out which gear you want uh, then the button there for the active park assist and hazard warning lights uh, and then we've got an electronic parking brake we've then got a nice armrest there for driver and front passenger uh, which you can lift up uh, that then uh, shows us the nice little storage box there in the middle which is actually quite deep and then there's a little lid which you can cover everything up to make it nice and secure put that down and everything is safely stowed away now in terms of the interior as well uh, there's some nice sort of textures going on here uh, so we've got the Senseco seats here uh, we've also got some padding along the um, sort of the door frames uh, where the red stitch in the same material that's used over there on the speaker grill is also up here on the dashboard as well so it's a nice sort of material finish then we come down we've got this sort of fake carbon fiber and then more of the sensor code with the red stitch in so there's actually a nice combination of materials there uh, and i think the interior looks really really smart and it's much better quality um, than I expected it to be if I'm really honest uh, I think this is really well built it's really well put together um, and it's actually a nice place to spend a fair bit of time so in terms of being in the driver's seat of the Mac-E it's actually a really nice comfortable place to be the seating position is really nice the seats themselves are really really comfortable very supportive um, the steering wheel is nicely positioned uh, it's adjustable for height and reach as well um, and you can perfectly easily see the display in front of the driver in terms of visibility plenty of visibility at the front of the car decent sized side windows um, so you can actually see quite easily uh, and the a pillar doesn't cause too much of a blind spot which is actually really really nice so this is the driver's seat in my position um, let's jump in the back now have a look at how much space we've got plus any of the features available for rear seat passengers as you can see Getting into the back of the Mackie wasn't too difficult at all. Um, the roof lining is a little bit low, so you just have to mind your head as you get in. Um, but the door aperture opens nice and wide, so it's actually easy um, to get your legs in. Um, in talking of legs, uh, there's ample leg space here, heaps and heaps. I can stretch my legs out. Uh, I can just about get my feet under the driver's seat in its lowest position. Uh, if you raise the seat up a little bit, you'd be able to stretch your legs out fully. Uh, and on a long journey, you'd be nice and relaxing. Uh, the materials continue from the front of the car so it's nice soft touch materials here on the top of the doors the same material there on the speaker grills as well uh, and the fake leather there uh, on the door uh, handles uh, we've also got air vents down here in the middle as well uh, plus a couple of usb charging points which is nice we get this huge panoramic roof which is actually standard on all three models uh, of the Mackie. there isn't an internal blind 
but it doesn't actually get hot in here. Uh, there's an actual coating on the glass, uh, which stops the sun sort of heating up the interior of the car, which is actually quite clever. Um, but it feels really sort of spacious back here. Um, I'm only five foot six, so I'm, I'm okay for headroom. Uh, if you had someone who was kind of six foot plus, um, yeah, they might struggle and hit their head on the glass. Um, but for us smaller people or normal sized people, if you like, uh, it's actually okay. Uh, the seats are really, really comfortable back here. It's got the same Sensico leather as you get in the front of the car. You've then got the fold down armrest here for rear passengers, which has got a couple of cup holders, which is nice. The two outer seats, um, if you can uh, carry a baby seat, the two outer seats uh, have got the Isofix child point mounting points as well. Um, so perfect family car. Uh, you can get everybody in, uh, no problems at all. But yeah, so it's actually quite nice back here for rear passengers. Visibility is good too. Um, not a bad size size window. You can see plenty out through the centre of the, uh, the front seats. Uh, plenty of light coming in from that panoramic sunroof. Um, so yeah, nice place to be back here for rear passengers. Right, so here we are in the side of the back here going for a drive. Um, I have been fortunate enough to drive quite a few electric cars uh, over the last few years. Uh, Hyundai, BMW uh, and a couple of others. So it's not my first time driving an electric car, so I do have a bit of an idea of what to expect. Um, I do appreciate a lot of people haven't driven an electric car. Uh, so in this part of the review, I'm going to tell you what it's like um, and what to expect if this is your first time. First thing you immediately notice is obviously how quiet it is. Um, that's obvious because this electric car doesn't make any noise. Oh, that feels perfectly normal. You sit obviously a little bit higher up, being this is an SUV, uh, but that's like any other SUV as well. And there's a couple of different things with electric cars. Because of the weight of the batteries, which are generally underneath, suspension has to be a little bit firmer, um, which therefore means that the ride is a little bit firmer too. Um, I think Ford has actually done a pretty decent job of trying to sort of cushion the suspension for, for people driving, um, so it's not too firm and uncomfortable. Obviously, if you uh, hit a pothole, that's going to upset the car a little bit, but generally the ride is actually pretty decent. The things that generally take a little bit of time to get used to whenever you drive a new car is the brake and accelerator. Uh, the brake can be a little bit sort of bitey, if you like. Um, you put too much pressure on it, it really throws the brakes on pretty quick, uh, which obviously in an emergency would be good, but for general day-to-day -day driving can be a little bit sharp. Um, if you use a one-pedal driving mode, I actually find that kind of overcomes that a little bit because when you're using one pedal driving as you take your foot off the accelerator it starts to brake for you automatically and you're able to regulate that a little bit by gently bringing your foot off the accelerator um, which then just applies the brakes gently as well so I actually find that's the best way uh, of driving this car that's certainly how I prefer to drive it anyway as with any electric car it's certainly got plenty of get up and go um, you won't have any trouble overtaking cars, going up hills, um, you know, and nipping in and out of little gaps in traffic. Um, that's even just in active mode. Uh, the untamed mode, which is like a sports mode, um, obviously means acceleration is much brisker. Uh, one thing you do tend to find with electric cars, because it's so quiet inside, you get a little bit of road noise or tyre noise or wind. And it's actually not too bad, considering the car runs on 19-inch wheels. Today is quite windy outside, as you might have heard from the video. There's actually not too much noise coming into the cabin. You can hear a little bit of wind, um, but that's to be expected because it's quite windy today. Um, other than that, yeah, it's generally pretty quiet in here. Now, if you like your music, like I do, uh, the b and sound system in here is absolutely fantastic. Um, you've got stereo mode, you've got surround mode. You can adjust all your bass and treble and everything else like that. Uh, and it sounds absolutely superb. Um, so yeah, you can turn it up while you're driving, sing along, and um, yeah, just really enjoy your music. It's fantastic. It's quite interesting when I was filming it earlier. Uh, I was near a cricket ground and there was actually a game being played. And three people from the, one of the cricket teams actually came over and had a look at the car. And they all knew what it was, which was quite cool. And they was asking me questions about it, you know, how far can you drive on a charge and what does it cost? And, and just generally having a look around the car. And they all sound really impressed, which was nice. And um, yeah, it was just interesting that you know, everyone knows about this car. 
and certainly here in Australia, no one would have seen one yet. So it was nice and they actually recognised that, yeah, this is the Mackie. And uh, wanted to come over and have a look, which was really cool. Like an SUV, you get a really nice sort of view ahead of the road because you sit up a little bit higher than a regular sort of sub, uh, sedan or hatch. And um, yeah, visibility is fantastic as well. Now we're just on the freeway now because I wanted to see what it was like at higher speeds. Uh, I have to say it's not too dissimilar to just going around town. There's a little bit more wind noise just because obviously we're going faster. But yeah, generally, just as quiet as being around town, which is quite cool. So that's the end of the video with the new Mustang mach -E Premium. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you have, give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel. Plus also hit the notification bell to find out the next time a video goes live. Um, the car is now back on charge, ready to go to the next dealership tomorrow morning. Uh, as I said, Ford Australia lent us this car uh, so we can give customers a taste of what new mach -E will be like. Uh, when it arrives in dealerships in a few months time if you've got any questions about the car feel free to leave them in the comments section for me below i'll answer them for you as soon as i can in the meantime thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed the video and i look forward to seeing you all in the next one